right, amazing. So we've got Luigi on the line. This is Hitachi speaking from the State DAO uh, account. And I think we'll just give a, a quick intro for everyone. I'm sure most of you are aware of what Avalanche is by now. And if you don't know what it is by now, then I'm sure Luigi will be able to take you through a quick synopsis. So the way we'll do this is just a quick intro, um, get into some questions which we've got already from the community. And then later down the line, we'll open up the floor for any questions. So without further ado, if Luigi, you could now introduce yourself to the staked out community, that would be amazing. Yeah, thanks for that, Hitachi. And, uh, you know, really excited for all the people on here and to, and to kind of talk about, um, you know, with the herd, some of the stuff that's going on in Avalanche. I know that, you know, we've done some really cool stuff together in the past and it's nice to see like the two communities um, starting to integrate together, especially with the new strategy that's been developed um, under Avalanche Rush. So, yeah, um, excited to be here. My, my role is the uh, head of DeFi at Avalabs, um, mainly focused on kind of like building out this DeFi ecosystem, as well as, uh, you know, some of the uh, strategy and BD that comes along with that. So, um, yeah, excited to be here, man. Good, good talk yeah, to you again. definitely. It's a it's a real pleasure to have someone you know as deep in the space as yourself come and speak to us on such a such a personal level. Um, I think uh, just just before we get started, for some of our I guess newer users or less experienced DeFi users, could you just give a, a bit of an intro into what you think Avalanche is? Yeah, sure. Um, so Avalanche is a uh, layer one scalable blockchain. That allows for um, you know the fastest finality of transactions and lowest transactions, um, from what I can see across the space. Um, it, it, it boasts a new consensus algorithm that was really developed out of Cornell University with Emin Gansir and some of his students. That allows um, the validators to essentially come to consensus really fast, and I think it's the next uh, um, leap in distributed systems uh, consensus mechanisms math. And so that's something that. Uh, has been tried out and proved uh, essentially over the last uh, year or so. And Avalanche has been on mainnet for a little bit over a year. So uh, there's definitely been some some good uh, traction in terms of the DeFi ecosystem in particular on Avalanche. Um, we've seen TVL go from about 200 million in August or in July to, depending on how you measure it, like 13 or 14 billion uh, currently. So it's a really strong meteoric rise seeing nice um, growth in wallets and unique users and really excited to see the community um, build in particular because that's that's in effect like the most important thing for, for what we're trying to build. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, it's been it's been quite amazing growth. Um, you touched on a few points around finality, transaction speed. You could just describe like what are the differences between Avalanche and I guess other L1s? Of course, there's been, you know, some recent, uh, I guess, uh, congestion on other chains, which has led to some issues. But Avalanche doesn't really seem to have that. Uh, in your opinion, why, why is that? What makes Avalanche different? Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, yeah, the space is the space is really being developed in terms of the L ones, and there's a lot of them. And, and and you know, we kind of invite more and more to come along, and, and hopefully, all together, we can build a really uh, strong foundation for DeFi and, and and gaming apps to kind of build on top of uh, Avalanche. I think you know, in particular, this consensus algorithm is something that, um, in effect, is just new to the space, and you know, uh, just kind of really changes the way that transactions are are, are essentially finalized you don't have this situation where you're waiting you know multiple blocks for confirmations right they're instantly final and that 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 is what improves the ux from the, from the user's perspective they don't necessarily uh, maybe know why that's happening but that is in effect what makes feeling like you're using the chain so 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 seamless uh, the other thing that avalanche has is, is really the architecture is kind of unique so the avalanche c chain is uh, an EVM compatible chain. That's the one that most people have used. That's where like Aave is deployed. That's where staked out strategy is. Um, but what Avalanche is really gonna bring in the future is a lot more than that. Uh, we have this subnet functionality um, or architecture, which allows for uh, essentially new chains to be to be easily spun up. Uh, we announced a few, like a month or so ago, something called subnet EVM, 
which is essentially like with the JSON file, you can deploy your own EVM chain. So, you know, let's say you're a gaming project who, you know, is doing millions of transactions per day. Um, you want to make gas even lower um, and you want to have a little bit of excitement around that environment. Uh, you can effectively deploy your own subnet on Avalanche and, you know, have this unique environment where your community can coalesce around that subnet. Uh, I think you're going to see a whole new host of exciting things with tokenomics and things like this because you can actually define new gas tokens within those subnets as well. So, like, you know, your native token to your application can actually be a gas token as well, um, which is, you know, provides a lot more utility to these tokens. And I think you're going to hear a lot about that coming coming in the future. But, you know, in effect, that's that's one example Um of what you can do with subnets. In addition, what you can do is you can also have different virtual machines, um, you know, in, in a subnet. So like right now the C chain is EVM compatible, but there's no reason you can either build your own virtual machine or, you know, have like a Rust at Rust based STK one. There's, these are all uh, entirely possible. The, the architecture is inc- incredibly flexible. Yeah. Amazing. I think there's uh, there's quite a lot of alpha in there for uh, the people listening on the call. <laughs> Uh, I think it's definitely really exciting in terms of the composability of the architecture, which you talk about. Of course, Avalanche has seen tremendous growth uh, within this past sort of even even one year, six months. Uh, and it's great to see, you know, so much activity and, and UX improvement um, clearly demonstrated by the addition of so much TVL onto Avalanche. I think one of the things which I'd really love to get into is where you see this developing further. because. Now, okay, there's there's a few, you know, of course, there's ETH, and then there's a few other sort of chains which have significant activity. I'd put Avalanche in that bracket, probably Solana, uh, Polygon. I'd say those three really stand out. Um, now, you mentioned this new thing about uh, chains and, you know, specialized gas tokens. I think that's something which we haven't really heard that much about. And I'm wondering if you could expand on that if you were to just give a dystopian vision for what you think could happen within the next two, three months, um, what do you think the space is going to look like? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot kind of happening under the hood right now. Um, really a ton. So, you know, I will, I will divulge what I can, but uh, in, in effect, I think what you're going to see is, uh, you're going to see the the blockchain space coalesce into these more um, you know specialized type of environments, and you know we're called what we call them as subnets um, or app chains is, is another is another way to reference it. But like let's say we had a hypothetical game, um, you know that really was producing you know, it really requires a ton of transactions. It's really not a great experience whether or not it's ten cents or twenty cents or fifty cents or a dollar, um, you know, to be spending that on every transaction like. You know, let's say you were, you know, uh, um, you know, like sending your crabs out for war or, you know, you're, <laughs> you're like tending to your chickens or whatever you're doing. Right. Uh, it's really not it's really not, um, you know, the way it should unfold in the future. Uh, so you can imagine a scenario where you have, um, in effect, an app chain for that specific DAP that the native currency of it pays for the gas. That's really cool because for like a user from a UX perspective, what's nice about that is you can, you know, onboard users directly to the subnet, airdrop them some of the native token, and boom, they're off and they're going without needing to like fumble through three different tokens and, you know, 10 different complicated bridging mechanisms, and they could just be there. Mm. And, uh, and I think that's one nice development. But I think in addition to that, what's, what's really cool is you can even have like um, the community really grow stronger because number one, you have this native gas token, which allows people to like co- coalesce around something. But in addition, you can have the community like, you know, get more involved. They can become validators on the subnet, right? So they can earn the token by validating as well. Um, and I think you're going to see these mini economies pop up across, you know, with, especially with gaming, I think it's, it's really useful because uh, it's generally less necessary to be like a hundred percent composable, but um you know, as you see additional metric, uh, additional infrastructure being built, I think you'll see, uh, I think you'll see this kind of like coalesce. So I think that's an example of, of what, what can happen. Um, and, uh, and I think, you know, in the next month or two or three, you'll see like a lot of these pop up. I mean,
mentioned before. Um, one of the things I think, personally speaking, by working with you guys and building within the Avalanche system is, is you guys are really all about builders and enabling builders, you know, providing both education, resources, whatever else, uh, to make sure that people are able to build this ecosystems that you're talking about. Um, would you just be able to talk a little bit about your experience as, as the growth lead for DeFi at Ava Labs? Um, what it means for you, I think, for a protocol to be successful on the Avalanche ecosystem and what you'd like to see a little bit more of. Feel free to mention Stake yeah. as an example in this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, you guys are obviously welcoming uh, community, right? So, and, that, and that's what we want. Like at the end of the day, um, there are going to be multiple chains there are going to, you know, this is, this is generally speaking going to happen. This is not, this, I don't think this is a surprise to anybody. So, um, you know, I, I think, for us, what, what, what kind of we're focused on is building out a native developer community, as well as also being super invited to, um, you know, communities that are coalescing around like something like the EVM, right? So we want to be opening, we want to be open to uh, developers who are who are building EVM based apps, but we also want to be, um, you know, really growing our own. You know, you'd be surprised to know that, um, you know, we surveyed a bunch of users on Avalanche, and a lot of them had never even used Ethereum. Um, they were onboarded here. And I think a lot of people who have been in the space for a while forget that, you know, just generally speaking, if you're newer to crypto, um, you know, it's just not logical to have been onboarded on Ethereum. It's just too expensive, especially, you know, depending on where you are in the world. So, and, you know, Avalanche and other L1s that pop up, but also grow the pie as a whole. And this is something that is, you know, to me, like really, really um, beneficial for growing the space together um but what we're looking for just to pivot a little bit uh, what we're looking for is we're, we're looking for builders who are i always tell them you know when we're whenever we have a call like i'm not i don't really care if this is if this dap that you're building right now is like you know the next stake dow or something like that i care that you know whether or not it's your second or third dap that you know it's going to be here and that we support you throughout the whole process to make sure that you know, you continue to build here. And uh, I think it's perfectly reasonable that some dApps work and some don't, um, you know, from a product market fit perspective. But um, that's kind of like the approach that we're taking. We're looking to build a very native developer community. And like I tell people all the time that, you know, if the next stake DAO, Aave, Curve, et cetera, uh, don't emulate or don't come from the Avalanche community, then we failed. So that's kind of like, uh, you know, how I'm viewing the landscape. Yeah, amazing. I think some really insightful thoughts there. Um, I'd like to dig into something a little bit more special. I think we've got uh, Julian on the line as well, so I'll let him introduce himself in a second. Um, but of course, the the primary use case, I think, for Stake DAO has been bipartisan, probably, um, uh, focused on the arbitrage strategy, uh, where Julian and some of the engineers at Stake Capital slash Stake DAO have been running arbitrage bots. Um, you might have noticed as well, we have a Avalanche staking node, quite a few, uh, where users can delegate their AVAX. And I think now it's probably a good time for Julian to introduce himself and talk about his experience a little bit about running these ARB bots on AVAX, talk a little bit about the speed, usability, maybe how working with Luigi has been going. Yeah, uh, thank thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm in the train, so sorry if the the signal is not uh, is not ideal. Um, yeah, I think I, I I think you guys on the on the platform I've seen over the past uh, few months that we've been taking quite a large operation and activity on the Avalanche chain. And as mentioned by uh, Luigi, I think the reason for that is the uh, easiness and also um, the different features that Avalanche provide to our users, but also for us uh, building on top of. Um, so obviously uh, the speed, the cost, and also the different toolings that Avalanche provide. Um, so we've been, uh, first we started as a, as a, as a DevOps, uh, so running validators on, on Avalanche. And the reason for that at the, the early early stage of, of, uh, of the infrastructure that we were building was to empower our DeFi products. And one of them 
uh, is the uh, uh, arbitrage strategy that we were the first one to release uh, 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 on uh, as a strategy, and 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 this strategy is using NFTs as well. Uh, so you can you can limit the amount of people to join the strategy and capture those arbitrage uh, profits over time on a weekly basis. And uh, this has been pretty uh, profitable. So we're running uh, between 250 uh, million US dollars uh, up to 350 million US dollars as a as a, a validators uh, stack. And we use those uh, different um, uh, delegation to uh, uh, provide arbitrage opportunities to our, uh, our bots. Uh, so this is the first one. This is the DevOps side and the quantitative algorithmic trading that we could say. Uh, on Avalanche, and we also have um, a few a few different strategies. So, what we're trying to do on Avalanche and really get into uh, big presents there is uh, running DevOps, uh, building strategies, and also then getting from the different tools that we from the different uh, uh, um, uh, system, the DevOps and the strategies, using them to then build quantitative algorithmic trading uh, and products. And we've been, um, and the network that has been providing us uh, the best uh, return and facilities so far is actually Avalanche. And, and uh, the collaboration with Luigi and the team has always been super uh, responsive. And uh, so that's why we've been uh, successful there. That's the reason. Amazing. Yeah, I think uh, really insightful. And for being on the train, you came through exceptionally clearly. Um, so I think uh, I think we've had a we've had a good solid base. Now we've got a few more exciting questions coming through. Um, so first of all, for either of oh, you, or just uh, what yeah, is we also, next? We also, oh, sorry, I think there's a bit of lagging. We also like crossed uh, 120 million on the on the strat on the strategy. I'm saying I think we're aiming for maybe 150 million, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, I would yeah, like congratulations to, uh, on that. That's uh, that's really nice. It's really Sorry, nice growth to see that strategy. strategy yeah. This has been fascinating. And the Avalanche strategy with the NFTs, I think we could do a little bit better on the mark, uh, on how this strategy uh, uh, behaves. But this is like providing uh, almost 200% APY on, on, on stables uh, to the arbitrage using some uh, Kikas uh, NFTs, uh, Leviathan and, and, and Tamiel. And no one has been doing... No one has done this in the entire DeFi uh, ecosystem. So I think this is pretty, pretty awesome. So actually, Julian, can you, can you actually like, uh, I get a lot of questions on it, um, on the arbitrage strategy. So, so can you just walk through very simply, you know, or, or Hitachi, you know, exactly, you know, what stables they put in, uh, what, what they have to buy uh, in order to kind of leverage that 200% APY on that, on that strat? So yeah, uh, think about this strat as a traditional financial product where you have bonds. Uh, and in order to access the the, uh, the uh, advanced uh, uh, financial strategy, you need to have a specific uh, uh, ticket. Well, in this one, uh, we use NFTs. But NFTs comes into three different categories. You have the common one that are about like 100 of them, and then the rare one that are about like 10 of them, and then the unique one. Based on the NFT that you are able to purchase or acquire because of the points or whatever, uh, then you can stake them into the strategy. And then this uh, NFT, the category gives you access to an amount of assets that you can, you can stake as SDT. And this represents your partial, your partial ownership of the strategy over time. So depending on the, uh, for example, I think from memory, the common give you access to 3,200 3, SDT. And AZT currently is trading at 2.5. So it's about like 10,000 US dollars. So if you stake those 10,000 US dollars worth of SDT inside, then you are able to capture a percentage of the vote over time. This is how you enter the strategy using an, an NFT. You stake those SDT and then you capture the USD in return. But like if, if you if you put 10,000 US dollars... At Very cool. Thank you for that. 10,000 yeah. US dollars at 200, 200%. Then that gives you like a pretty big uh, amount of uh, of uh, profits at the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, the effective APY is still super super high. Yep, and it, and it will remain super high because we limit the amount of people that can enter the strategy. So we guarantee, as long as we yep. can make arbitrage profits, we guarantee that will 
be providing the same API over time to those users that enter the strategy. And, and we're doing this because we believe and we are confident in the arbitrage operation that we're running that we can guarantee the amount of cash and the amount of profit that we are on a weekly basis uh, providing to the strategy. So it's about, it's between like 60 and 100,000 US dollars a week, half a million US dollars, uh, uh, less than half a million US dollars a month that we're providing to those people that are using uh, this arbitrage strategy. So yeah, sweet. Amazing. I think we can work on actually messaging of that and, and kind of like, you know, work with you guys in terms of uh, allowing people to understand how they can leverage that. This is this is a good, that helped me to be honest with you. So I think we'll we'll work with you guys to kind of get the word out a bit more on that. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great actually. Because I think this never happened in DeFi space. I mean, this is like running the entire uh, full stack operation from DevOps to strategy, to arbitrage, to quantitative algorithmic trading uh, skills. So we have yeah. everything because you need to understand um, how to take those arbitrage, how to use the DevOps, how to use those different smart contracts deployed on on, the, on Avalanche and the different chains, and also like uh, competition because arbitrage is a lot, is really competitive, way more than DeFi. I mean, like normal DeFi, like being year like a year and all this. hundred percent. Yeah, and, and 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 the normal retail type of user is not going to be able to stand up these you know this type of complicated arbitrage strategy. So you're providing a window for them to kind of access the, the type of returns that you can get without actually, you know, having to understand the complexity of the, of the, oh, yeah, you know, of the strat. It's awesome. Yeah, because yeah, awesome. we're providing, and I mean, we're not providing the entire profit because we need to run the cost of uh, running yep. those validators and they have a lot of them. Uh, so we do like half of the profit. I mean, actually 25, 20% goes inside the strategy and the rest goes amount of the things that we're running. Uh, but what's interesting is like the skills that are required to do those kind of arbitrage are quantitative background. So you need like a strong mathematics background uh, and, and, uh, and analysis of all the different uh, uh, contracts. So it's not, yes, yeah, it's, it's really not simple. And what we're doing is like we're providing this complexity for free to our users that they can just take and profit from the from the from the from the arbitrage opportunities that we run. Sweet. Yeah, very exciting. So uh Julian, Luigi, what's next for Stake DAO and Avalanche besides uh, education around the arbitrage strategy? What's uh what's new for the space? What's coming? Yeah, I think we will continue the expansion of uh, on Avalanche. Uh, we are uh, scaling the team that uh, will be uh, uh, that uh, is taking uh, like more responsibility uh, inside Stake DAO to operate more different products on Avalanche. We are uh, planning like an alpha, planning to release a pretty strong NFT mechanism that will be entirely built on Avalanche across uh, kind of like a meta on the top of the new platform that we are. Are going to release on Stake DAO with a new token economics and all different things, and this will be a lot of this will be uh, uh, principally uh, 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 mainly uh, available on Avalanche. Uh, so we have NFTs and also like building more different strategies, and also something that we have been looking into and we're building on top of Avalanche is cross layers, uh, cross layers uh, arbitrage, cross layer strategies, and also like uh, uh, the NFT mechanism that I was talking about in terms of mechanism. Yeah, yeah that's um, that's a nice roadmap for for kind of like the collaboration, and um, you know, I think we'll probably learn more about what comes when you know in in, uh, in Barcelona when we have the Avalanche Summit. I think this can be a great place, uh, you know, from an educational perspective for a lot of people to learn about some of what's going on in DeFi and gaming, and also Avalanche and and, and the Layer One space as a whole. You know, we're really hoping to make this super educational for everybody, and also just you know, straight good vibes. So. Uh, excited and hopefully see you guys there in the herd as well. But uh, I think, you know, kind of the collaboration between StakeDAO and, and Avalanche, you know, emulates kind of like the future of DeFi and, and, and a lot of what's possible in this space is, you know, StakeDAO builds on top of a lot of chains and, 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 you know, is able to enter many communities. And it's great to see that, you know, they're able to, you know, you guys are able to kind of integrate so nicely with all these communities, build and provide value that normal retail can actually access and like to me that's like the, one of the purest benefits that state that provides it's like 
you know, stuff that like, let's say I'm just a, an average user and I want to be able to like do all the things that, you know, Sir Julian is doing behind his laptop. I can't, but you know, you provide a, a good way for somebody to actually access those returns. And that's, you know, that doesn't happen in traditional finance. Um, you know, they, they try to, uh, you know, traditionally they try to like kind of give you access to some hedge fund or something like that, but you don't really get to participate in like some of the super nuanced strats uh, as, as retail. Yeah, definitely. And I think that was one of the first things uh, when we when we launched uh, over a year ago now. Um, it was one of the, the first sort of underlying commitments that we made was to make the most useful strategies in DeFi accessible to to everyone. And yeah, thanks to thanks to building on top of Avalanche and, and the work of our engineers, you know, we've actually been able to, to open that up. But there's there's definitely more to come in this space. I think now is probably a good time to open up the floor to any questions. So we've got the the chat, so keep them coming there. Um, but also, if there's anyone on this call who wants to ask a question, just feel free to put your hand up to request, and we'll we'll bring you onto the floor so you can chat to Julian and Luigi. Hey there, Terry. So you're on the well, line. I think we so can, feel free uh, to we can get unmute yourself. Okay, well, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and ask my question. Uh, this is about subnets. So, uh, so regarding subnets, let's say you spin up another subnet, okay, for whatever project you're doing. Um, do you have to, uh, what is it? Let's say you can pay in a native token uh, for the users on the front end. But on the back end, uh, does this still require uh, AVAX? So, um, currently speaking, thank you for the question, by the way. It's a great question. So currently speaking, it's not the type of uh, mechanism where it's like, you know, obfuscating the fee payments and like, you know, uh, some RPC is handling the transaction like on other chains. That is not what's happening. You are natively paying it. What the Avox is doing, um, you know, is the, the valid. If you were validating a subnet, you must also validate the Avalanche primary network. So that is where the Avox comes into play. You need to purchase Avox enough to become a validator. Um, to validate the primary network, if you want to validate a subnet. So, as the as the app, this is this is really wonderful for you. You don't have to worry about some obfuscated way of like converting, you know, this gas token into a box and like having it all liquidated. Uh, this is just happening. You were na that is naturally the gas token. Okay, thank you. Also, just a, another follow up question: How many subnets are possible? And uh, what will composability look like in terms of a spectrum of composability? Yeah, so great question. Um, subnets are theoretically are, are infinite. This is not like a, a parachain type of architecture. They are completely infinite. You can continue to spin up subnets um, given how the architecture is constructed. In terms of um, uh, what was the second question? Oh, composability. So. Yeah, there's a lot to come on this. Um, you know, I know on our roadmap we have something called uh, cross subnet uh, transfers, which will come come out in the future. That'll increase the composability. But like, if you could just think about it, um, you know, given all the advances in bridging right now, you can easily compose between um, you know Avalanche C chain and a subnet uh, via any of these bridging alternatives. They could just point to the to the subnet and provide that that service. We've already even had multiple discussions with them and, and and that's something that that will be provided as a service in addition it's really you know, trivial to kind of be able to you know mint and burn between a subnet and, and the c chain or any other evm so this is something that will i think be an area for continued improvement but uh, as it stands today um you know there are there are solutions available for you and do you know regarding composability has the re has the research been done yet uh and uh, is it just a matter of implementation? There has been research that's gone into it. I don't have the exact uh, status on where that all stands. It's not really kind of where I sit um, in terms of, uh, of like in terms of the devs. But uh, I know that yeah, a lot of research has already gone into that for sure. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Amazing. Uh, Forrest, do you wanna do you wanna jump in here? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having this space. This question was pretty much directed for Luigi. I was wondering, and I don't know if this is too out of place or not, but 
obviously the NFT um, space has been really taking off in Avalanche. And I think we're really excited about that because it helps on board um, a lot more users. And one question I had was if there was any sort of support that uh, Ava Labs is giving to upcoming projects or sort of kind of grants or, or exposure or ways of collaborating and how could we uh, how could we collaborate with Ava Labs or Avalanche in general? Yeah, no, thank you for the question. Um, this, it's a very good one. The NFT space has been really sort of exploding on Avalanche as of late. That's it's a nice development to see. Um, we have, uh, you know, from from a BD perspective, we talk to a lot of projects, and you know, if, if projects come to us earlier, early enough in their process, you know, you know, we can try and bet them and do co marketing or something like that with them. Um, I think that's entirely possible. Uh, there's also something called the Blizzard Fund, which provides investments to certain projects depending on kind of um, you know exactly what they're building. So that's entirely possible as well. Um, so there's, there's multiple ways to support, uh, but there, you know, the NFT space is incredibly vast and there are, are, you know, like 15 new projects popping up a day. So it is a bit of a landmine in some, in some respects for, you know, one entity to navigate, but there's, what's really neat is there's actually a bunch of, uh, native kind of like DAOs that are developing that are, you know, really building the community out, decentralizing it and providing the service in terms of investing in these projects and supporting them. You know, I know there's something called like a ventures DAO that has been investing in certain aid projects as well. So I think you're going to continue to see that explode as well. Great. And, and what would that mean in terms of reaching out? Like, would I be able to reach out to you directly or is there an email or other team members that I should be speaking to in, in terms of, yeah, getting those, uh, that communication going in, in the preliminary phases of starting a project. Uh, yeah, you can reach out to me and then I can see kind of who I could, who I could put you in touch with. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks mate. Amazing guys. Um, sorry, Terry, I know you've got your hand up, um, but I actually have got, uh, limit on this call. Sorry, guys, we're going to have to cut it there. Thanks very much both to our speakers and also all of you guys for sending in your questions. The rest of them we're going to forward on to Luigi and we'll try and get back to you via the Discord and Twitter. Um, Terry, don't feel free to join us on Discord and just ask there and we'll make sure you get your answer there. Um, Julian, I will just invite you to close off and maybe Luigi, if you want to just um, say goodbye. Yeah, no, thank you guys for having me. Um, sorry, sorry for, for, you know, the brief, the briefer one, but kind of been traveling a little bit uh, this week. Um, so it's kind of been a little back to back, but you know, I think at the end of the day, what, what's most important to me is that uh, the herd and the staked out community continue to understand how much Avalanche appreciates and supports uh, everything that they're building, you know, we've worked really hard to build a strong relationship with the staked out team and, and look to continue to build upon that and work together with them. It's, you know, one of the, one of, it was one of my primary focuses, you know, when I got the role and, and it was kind of focused on working with you guys. And I think we've done a nice job at doing that. I'm really pumped, really pumped about all the stuff that we can continue to do. Yeah, likewise. I think we just uh, we just lost Julianne again. Um, but, you know, totally echo those thoughts. The Avalanche experience has been extremely smooth, both from the tech side and also just the professionalism that you guys exude. You also throw spectacular events, which I was had the privilege of attending last time. So I'm really looking forward to Barcelona. And yeah, really looking forward to see what we build over the next few months and years. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Um, I'm going to have to drop, but uh, really, really pumped to, to kind of continue to work with you guys and appreciate um, you putting this together. Definitely. Well, uh, we'll look forward to having you back on soon. Thank you. Have a All good right. one, guys. Cheers. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Cheers.